So, oh no, no. You didn't get encouraged, Yeah, okay. okay. So, <clears throat> any of you born in the mid 70s? Like, yeah. Okay, yeah. 37 years old. I am uh, Gabe Zuckerman. I'm the author of Gamification by Design, a new O'Reilly book, and part of the first generation of people who grew up with games all around them. And when you ask people what was the most seminal or important advance in the games industry, most people think about the Atari 2600, the original kind of Atari console. But I actually think it's where in the world is Carmen San Diego. Because, because, and by the way, it was the last great hit of, um, of the educational software business. And I think that Where in the World is Carmen San Diego is the most important game in history because it's the last time that parents, teachers, and children agreed on a great game. And it's been a really long time since that happened. And since that time until now, I played games like Civilization. I spent eight to 10,000 hours playing it. My whole friend, <laughs> true. Um, and it really affected the way that I think about the world. And so imagine my surprise when in the New York Times three months ago, they wrote an article about ADD, and the central concept of the article was uh, a neuro neuroscientist who was talking about how um, they were parents would come in and bring their children who had clinically diagnosed attention deficit disorder and say, but my kid can't have ADD because he plays games really well. He's really focused on games. And she trotted out these researchers who said, well, kill children who play games often may find the real world uninspiring because of the way games are and that they're not taught the right kind of attention skills and rewards. And I thought to myself, you know what? Maybe the problem isn't that our children have ADD. Maybe it's that our world is too fucking slow. <laughs> maybe, maybe the insane multitasking that our children do today, playing games like World of Warcraft, you remember the games we had to play, the only thing I had to do was be able to manipulate a joystick and press a button. Right. Today, if you play World of Warcraft, you have to be able to manage six simultaneous activities at once, including operating your character, chatting with other people, and dealing with the constant interruption of your parents asking you if you'll eat something. <laughs> it's an incredibly, incredibly sophisticated thing for children to have to do. And it points out something really interesting in research from RMA at the uh, University of Regensburg which is if you give somebody a task to learn, in 12 weeks of learning a task, in the case of, in the maze case, it was uh, learning to juggle, if you give somebody a task to learn in 12 weeks, there will be a noticeable increase in gray matter in their brain, in 12 weeks time. And they redid the study in 2008, they did one in 2004, one in 2008, they redid it and isolated, it is not the quality of learning, it is the act of learning that causes your gray matter in your brain to increase in a marked way. It is a shocking, shocking result. And it's especially interesting when we connect that with the concept of fluid intelligence. Andrea Kusevsky, lecturing at Harvard, talked about how to increase our fluid intelligence. That's our ability to answer, to problem solve and answer questions. And she described a few different things that we could do. To seek novelty, to challenge ourselves, to think creatively, to do things the hard way, and to network. These are the things that she describes to increase our fluid intelligence. If you play video games, you'll immediately recognize these are the core assets of a video game. This is the main thing we do when we play video games, which is constantly be exposed to challenges of all kinds. It may finally explain a concept called the Flynn effect. And the Flynn effect is that our IQs are rising every year. Every year that goes by, IQ is increasing in the world at large. Now, crystalline intelligence, which is our fixed intelligence things that we know, is not rising. But fluid intelligence is rising, and it's rising at an increasing rate, particularly in countries like the United States, Korea, and Japan, and has been increasing since the 1990s. You may see a correlation between those things and the rise of social video games. The core concept is, Fluid intelligence is different from crystal intelligence and maybe the new measure that we have to measure as far as our sort of dense children. Now, the real thing that's interesting about video games is, according to a bunch of research included by Judy Willis, is that video games are hardwired to produce pleasure slash addiction. Challenge, achievement, reward, produces dopamine in the brain, loop around, loop around, loop around, more dopamine, ergo games are gonna be better at teaching things. And so I introduce you to Anand's Pi a teacher in White Bear Lake, Minnesota, who retooled an entire education system for his kids using standard off-the-shelf video games. He took his below third grade average at reading and math kids to a mid fourth grade level at reading and math in 18 weeks, simply by replacing the classic curriculum with games. It's also true 
that while violent video games probably don't make our children violent, we have to accept that they train them to be better at violence if they were naturally predisposed to do so. And it's true, we just have to accept it. Like, I'm not gonna be apologist for this. We have to accept that they're great training tools. It means that our future is going to be very different, driven by our brilliant children, our Generation G, the gamer generation. It's gonna be faster, more rewarding, more collaborative, and dare I say, more global than ever before, because our kids play with everybody. And so if I can give you one admonition, a prescription for you and your family, Go play with your kids. It's the best possible thing you could do. Woo!